Hello and welcome to this Hawk Hydrant webinar on the OTT Compact Bubbler Center, known simply as the OTT CBS. I'm Nick Rendell with Hawk Hydrant, and today's panelist is OTT Product Manager Christelle Valentine. Today's 20-minute presentation will give an overview of the OTT CBS and its bubble level technology, QA QC practices for reliable data, and the benefits of using a bubble chamber. We will conclude the webinar with a 10-minute Q&A session. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box found on the right-hand side of the screen, and we will answer them verbally for everyone to hear. Christelle will now provide an overview of the bubbler technology employed by the OTT CBS. Thanks, Nick. We will first look at the measuring principle of the OTT CBS. A piston pump inside the compact bubble sensor generates compressed air which then flows through a dedicated line into a bubble chamber at programmable intervals where it bubbles uniformly into the water. Depending on the water level above the bubble chamber, an air pressure equal to the hydrostatic pressure is established in the measuring tube. There is a linear relationship between the measured water level and the air pressure inside the measuring tube. Depending on the water level, which is shown here as H, above the orifice opening, an air pressure equal to the hydrostatic pressure, shown here as capital P, is established inside the measuring tube. In this equation, small g is gravitational acceleration and the lowercase p is the specific gravity of water. The next equation looks at R, the resistance of the complete system, and this includes the pressure measurement cell, measurement tube, and bubble chamber. So the resistance of the complete system times the change in airflow, which is indicated here as capital I, is used to calculate pressure at the measuring cell and at the measurement tube opening, which is shown here as capital P. With static systems, airflow and resistance are constant where any changes in airflow are equal to zero. Therefore, changes in pressure are also equal to zero. In other words, static bubbler systems maintain the same pressure throughout the system. This means that the same pressure can be observed at the pressure measuring cell and at the orifice opening in the water. With static systems, sources of error that result from changes in airflow are thus eliminated. To, make, to take a more detailed look at a static system, let's go through the intelligent pumping strategy of the CBS. Measurement of tube pressure, which is compared to the previous measurement, is step number one. This helps to determine the number of required pump cycles. Step number two is where we take a look at the atmospheric pressure reference. This performs a simultaneous zero adjustment of the pressure measurement cell which compensates for temperature influences at the beginning of a measurement. The next step, step three, is the pressure measurement. The pump motor generates and pushes compressed air into the tube to create a bubble in pressure, where pressure at the bubble chamber opening is equal to that of the pressure at the pressure measuring cell. This is the pneumatic pressure measurement. Now it's worth noting that the same pressure cell is used to measure atmospheric pressure and tube pressure. This accounts for the drift-free measurement. The water level measurement is calculated by subtracting atmospheric pressure from the tube pressure. We'll now take a detailed look at the compact bubble sensor. The internal piston pump generates compressed air, which is then pushed through the measuring tube and out of the bubble chamber for each and every measurement. That means the piston pump is inactive between measurements. So one might ask, how does the unit maintain pressure in the measuring tube between measurements? The CBS is equipped with a differential pressure valve that opens and closes the entrance to either the measuring tube or vent for atmospheric pressure. When the CBS is not measuring, the valve closes. It closes off the entrance to the measuring tube. Also, keep in mind that the bubble chamber attached to the end of the measuring tube in the water acts as a buffer. Now, we'll take a more in-depth look at the bubble chamber in a few minutes. 
Now, if between measurements the water level change is small, perhaps only one to two hundredths of a foot, the piston pump will only need to conduct a few pump strokes to generate enough compressed air to push bubbles out the bubble chamber via the measuring tube. If the water level has changed dramatically, say there is a flash flood and the water level has increased by six feet, or about 0.2 bar, the compact bubble sensor may require more than seven pump strokes to push air bubbles out of the measuring tube. The number of pump strokes required depends on the measured difference between the previous measurement, current pressure in the measurement tube, and barometric pressure. Now, since the unit is only pumping the required pump strokes, it significantly lowers the overall power consumption as well as prolongs the pump motor life. The CBS acts quickly to drastic water level changes without lag. So, for example, if the water level increases by, say, 10 feet within a measurement interval to the real rapid rise, the CBS will recognize the change in pressure within 14 seconds of initiating that measurement. This holds true in water depth up to 16 feet. If water depth is greater than 16 feet, let's say up to 50 feet, the unit will recognize a water level change of 3.3 feet within the measuring interval of one minute. Now you might wonder what a bubble chamber is and what it does. A bubble chamber creates a cushion or buffer that in turn allows bubbles to easily escape the measurement tube when the pressure exceeds the hydrostatic pressure of the water column above the bubble chamber. The bubble chamber shown here is the EPS S50. It's a bubble, bubble in system with a volume of 50 cubic centimeters. So that means that reservoir of air is 50 cubic centimeters. Its deer foot or teardrop design assists with minimizing current pressure effects around the bubble chamber. Bubble chambers also reduce waves near the opening of the measuring tube and in turn minimize wave influences that may result in your measurements and reduce additional data processing. Bubble chambers also prevent water from entering the measuring tube. Only during extreme cases where the water level increases by 10 feet or more in a short measuring interval would you find water that has actually entered the tube. If a bubble chamber is not used, water may rise into the tube after bubbles have escaped. If water is inside the tube during the pressure reading of the tube, the measurement may not reflect the true stage value or level value. It may be 